Praise the Lord. I think we should always get a faith impartation when we gather together under the Word of God. Amen? Because it's the Word of faith we preach. And God wants us to have faith. If you look around you tonight, you're sitting in the middle of a dream that became a reality because we pressed in in faith and trusted God to do what he said he would do. Tonight, we're sitting in the middle of a miracle. We don't have to go looking for one. We're sitting in the midst of a miracle. And you know, God is doing great things in this season and in this time. I don't know if you were here last night, but I'm telling you what, last night was the greatest impartation of transformation that you would have ever received. I'm telling you, if you were really looking for transformation this summer, you should have been here last night. Okay, I'm mother, right? I'm the mother of the ministry. Where were you? Where were you? All you people who post up on your Facebook, don't miss camp, and then you don't show up. Where were you? Yeah, because last night God did something very, very special in this place. There was an impartation of transformation. And you know, it was even to the children. There was lots of kids here last night, different age groups. And I'm telling you, the couple that were here that talk about light up your world were an amazing example of how the quality of your life can change the quality of someone else's. And we had better soon start to rise up and shine our light. It's time. It's time. God's not going to look forward to us sitting around and doing nothing in the church anymore. It's time to rise and shine. The light of his glory has come. He is shining upon all of us. So what are we going to do? Put it under a bushel or move into the dark place and cause the light to come forth? God is doing great things in this season. You know, uh, I got a great report today from the Congo. Great things are happening already. I mean, they're having some supernatural happenings already. Oh, I can't wait till I get home tonight and see the message in my inbox. But I'm telling you, I had to really exercise my own faith in the last few days. Because it was very hectic getting him out of here. There was a whole mess up with his ticket. And you know, I had this knowing. You know that knowing that's on the inside of you? That you just know that you know that you know. That something ain't right. And it's not going to go down just the way you think it's going to go down. And I couldn't get rid of that knowing. I knew that it wasn't going to go down the way we thought. And it didn't go down the way we thought. But praise God, his hand was in it anyway. And he shuffled the deck and they all got back together. So praise God. And they're having an awesome time. <laughs> I don't know if you went on your Facebook today, but Dr. Russ was standing with some nice African people looking as happy as could be in his bright pink shirt, (laughs) getting ready to do some supernatural things in the conference there. And I know that God is going to show up and show off for them. This is new territory, uncharted ground. We're taking new ground, Eagle Worldwide Ministries. When you sow, you go. You're all a part of that. You are all a part of what God is doing in the Congo this week because you've been faithful to give. You've been faithful to sow. You know, God has been stirring that in us in this season again. How important our giving is into the body. How important our giving is to the vision. I mean, we've had times when the Lord has woken Brother Russ up because the ministry hasn't paid its tithes. Imagine. The ministry hadn't paid its tithes. Things had gotten behind. So God would stir and wake up Brother Russ. Why? Because he wanted him to plant the tithe so he could take the curse off, open the windows of heaven so that when we gave offerings, we would build our house. When you tithe, you build God's house. When you give offerings, you build your own. And God was showing us that there's problems financially because people were withholding what they were supposed to give. And I'm telling you that God wants to change that in this season in the body of Christ. We have got to believe the word of God that it's true. And if we give, it's given back to you. Shake down, press together, running over. And God wants to run it over in the body of Christ. Why? So that we have more than enough to give into every good work. And that we'll be a storehouse for those that are in need in this season that is ahead of us. Come on. We're called to be the lighthouse. We're called to have the provision. We're called to have what those in the darkness are going to need. 
And we've got to be willing to let God work in us in those areas in this season because he's going to do great things. That is not my message. Like Brother Russ says, that was just, hi, how are you? That was a freebie. That was something God has been talking to me about. Waking me up, showing me things, getting me to pray about things. Because God wants to do some things in and through all of us that we will change so that he can bring change. That's part of transformation. Learning what belongs to us and what belongs to God. Everything I have belongs to God. I don't know about you, but if everything, if you're a child of God, everything that you have belongs to God. Okay, are you in covenant? Are you married to him? Okay, I'm married to my husband. Hallelujah. Everything that's his is mine. It's mine. Hallelujah. And everything that's mine is his most of the time. (laughs) But it is mine. And it is his. And that's the same way with God. That everything that's his is mine. If I'm in covenant. I was sharing with someone very close to me not too long ago. I said, you can't live in the blessing of God if you don't live in full covenant with him. If you're just playing around and you're just dabbling around, you're never, ever, ever going to live in the full blessing of God. He wants to pour it out. He wants us to live in the overflow. He doesn't want us to merely get by. He wants us to live in the land of good and plenty. He wants us to live in the land of more than enough. Milk and honey, the Bible says. He wants us to live there, but guess what? It's our choice that will keep us from fully walking in the blessing of God. It's up to me and you what we're going to do. But God wants us to. He wants us to see that as we give, we're going to receive. Amen? And it's not just so we can do whatever we want and have whatever we want. It's so we have more than enough to give into the work of the ministry, the work of the kingdom, that those that don't have will have. That those that are in need will be able to come and get what they need. I mean, take a look downtown, folks. All the people that are being serviced at the Kingsway. They are in need. And we want to have more than enough that we can supply that need. So as the darkness gets darker, and it's going to, it's true. Then we'll have what they need, me and you. And they'll come because the church will be the storehouse. The church will be moving in God's plan. The church will have all that God intended it would have so that those that have not will come to the church. They'll come to the light. They'll come to understanding that they need to be saved, that they need to have Christ. Come on, it's important. It's not just about our loonies and toonies. It's about our heart attitudes. And God is changing our heart attitudes. We are not called to withhold. We're not called to be a puddle. We're called to be a river. And we're called to flow. Amen. I'm not supposed to be going there. Why am I? Anyway, I'm just going to go where God tells me to. But I think it's important in this season. And this is like a family tonight. We are like the, the core group. There's a lot of people missing tonight. But I'm telling you, God is up to something very special in this season. You know, some bad things have happened, but so have some good ones. We started camp with a double covenant. We started camp with two weddings back to back. The first wedding covenanted with the second wedding, made sure they had all the food they needed, made sure they had every single thing they needed. Okay? A couple that were in need. And the storehouse gave in to the couple that were in need. That's what God is looking for. And then we had a a supernatural from glory to glory experience. Okay? Yes, somebody went home to be with the Lord, but he went home in the place that he would have loved to have gone home from. He was around the people who loved him, that were in covenant with him. And he went from glory to glory in a moment's time, in a twinkling of an eye, the Bible says. And he was with us, and then he was with him. Hallelujah. If I'm going to go, take me that way, Lord. From glory to glory, from glory to glory, from earth to heaven. Hallelujah. So let's look at things in the right perspective. Faith looks at things in the right perspective. Don't allow yourself to feel bad or get down. Come on, rise up. God is doing great things in this season and in this day. And don't think for one minute that the devil's not going to try to get in his way. 
Because that is the devil's job. And he's pretty good at it. He's had lots of experience. It's true. He tries to work through me and you. And sometimes we allow him to. But I can tell you that God will use it for his purpose. God will use it for his purpose. I remember being in Pennsylvania not too long ago, about eight weeks ago. And you all know the story of what happened to Jamie. He'd been involved in things he shouldn't have been involved in. He was brought to a hospital in Pennsylvania. He was on a life support. We were expecting that he was going to die. Five days he was hooked to life support, never could breathe on his own. There was no brain waves. He was, for the most part, done. He was being kept alive by a machine. Through a course of days and prayer and Russ going down and praying for him, things turned around. Praise God. He's still in the healing business. And within two weeks, he was out of the hospital and in a rehab program. And he was learning to walk again, and he was learning to hold things again because the drugs that he had taken had caused so much damage to his muscles that he couldn't even hold a cup and take a drink. Okay, we're living in a world where our kids are doing this all the time. The kids out there are doing it all the time. They're having farm parties, throwing all kinds of pills everywhere on the table and just taking a handful, and whatever happens, happens. They're playing Russian roulette, friends. So here's Jamie. They bring him in. He's been dead for five days. The Lord has mercy on him, okay? He's got mercy on him. Because when you play around with your own life like that, you need mercy. And because of the prayers of his family, the faith of his mother and his grandfather and his grandmother, God had mercy on us. And he gave him back. Because don't you know every day of your life is measured in the Lord's hand? And he has the right to choose if he'll give you back or take you home. And he gave him back. So we went down after he got out of the rehab program. And we knew that he was going to have to go back to jail because when you get into situations where you mess up, you're going to have to pay the piper. Okay, if you can't do the time, don't do the crime. So he knew that he was in trouble and he had to go back and he had to go to the police and he had to turn himself in and he would have to continue and work out the days that he had to do in jail because he violated his own probation by what he did. But for this week, he was free. So I picked him up, and I took him shopping. Because how you know he didn't have anything left? You go out there, you do all those things, and you work in the darkness where all the deeds of the darkness, and you don't have anything left because people steal from you, they lie to you, they beat you up. They they do all kinds of nasty things to you. So he had nothing So I took him out and I talked to him and I loved on him and I bought him some new clothes and I said, you know, you got to change your attitude. You got to change the way you behave. You make a mistake once, it's a mistake. You make it again, it's a choice. And your choices are making history in your life. You got to change your choices. And he agreed and we had a long talk. I took him for a long drive. We had a wonderful time together. And then I took him home. We were not at that house five minutes. And all hell broke loose. They were all fighting with each other. They were all yelling at each other. They were all mad about something. They were picking at one another. And I left there shaking my head. And I said to the Lord, what is wrong? What's going on? And the Lord spoke something so profound to me, I had to pull off the road. And he said, sanctification happens in the midst of habitation. I pulled off the road. I said, Lord, what do you mean? He said, sanctification happens in the midst of habitation. He said, you are purified and made like Jesus. You're made moral, reliable, and productive in the midst of those that you are friends with, that you are in family relationship with, in the midst of those you work with. Wherever God has placed you, his purpose and plan is that you would be sanctified in that place, that you would stop kicking against.
against the goads. And that you would yield your spirit to the spirit of God. And you would be made like him in the place where he put you. He chose your parents. He chose them. He chose who your sister would be. Who your brother would be. He chose where you would go to work. He chose. We didn't. We think we chose. (laughs) That's vanity. He chose. God knew from the day he put us in our mother's womb. Everything we would think. Everything we would do. Every mistake we would make. Every choice we would make. And he put us in the family where he wanted us to be. Now, I can tell you, when he said that to me, I was glad I was pulled off the side of the road. Because everybody's had experiences in their family. And I started thinking, you mean to tell me you chose what happened in my life? Yes. Why? That I would become like Jesus. My destiny is not to preach the word of God. Do I do it when I need to? Yeah. My destiny was not to run a restaurant and own it for 20 years like I did. My destiny was to be made in the likeness and image of Jesus. And that is your destiny too. And I can tell you that God is doing it in the midst of your situation right now. And how you respond to it, how you deal with it, how you handle it, how you react to it. Because lots of people react. And I'm telling you, reactors blow up. And they hurt a lot of people. And God wants us to learn how to respond in love to the circumstances and situations of our life that we might be truly sanctified by the Spirit of God. Even Jesus suffered. You know, we all get... Born again, hallelujah, people of faith, and we think we don't have to suffer anymore. That is the worst and craziest lie I've ever heard. We are still going to suffer. And we're going to be persecuted. But in the midst of that will come blessing. In the midst of that, God's purposes and plans will be fulfilled in our lives. When you're going through a hardship with somebody that's living next door to you or living in your own house... Rejoice and let your spirit be yielded to the spirit of God. When you feel like saying something nasty, say something nice. When you feel like giving somebody a piece of your mind, think about that twice. You've probably given away so many pieces you don't have much left. And we can't afford to be just flipping off and saying whatever we want to people. Because God is trying to teach our mouth to speak right things. He's trying to get us to order our conversation rightly. He's trying to get us to realize that we are chosen. That we are handpicked for a greater purpose and plan in God's kingdom. And the way that he perfects us, the way that he makes us into his likeness and image is by the people that he puts around about us. Iron sharpens iron. By the circumstances he allows in our lives. I'm telling you, you can shout me down all you want, but the devil, he works for God. He can't do one single thing to you unless God says it's okay to. He can't do one thing to you unless God says, oh yeah, go ahead, because you know what? Linda's not going to cave. Linda's going to rise up. You're going to think that she's going to cave, but in the last minute, she's going to put the boots to you, and she's going to rise up and do what I tell her to do. So go ahead. Give it your best shot. That's what God says. Come on. If we really look at it in the right perspective, we'll see. That he can't do anything to you and me unless God allows it. And why does he allow it? For this purpose, that we would be made into his likeness and image, that we would be sanctified and made holy, that we would 
have sanctification happen in the midst of habitation. Every situation that we go through, every concern that you deal with, every little worry that you have, you're not supposed to be worrying. We're, we're Christians. We're supposed to be meditating. Okay, you got a problem? Take a hold of the Word of God. Begin to meditate on that thing. Begin to see it come to pass in your life. Begin to speak it over your life. Instead of speaking worry and doubt and dismay and all the negative stuff, rise up and speak what you need in your life. The Bible says you can have what you say. The problem is we're all busy saying what we have. And we keep it. We keep it. I'm this, I'm that, oh, whoa, oh, me. Get over yourself. Rise up and speak positively. You know the word that came forward tonight? God wants us to move supernaturally. How are we going to move supernaturally when we can't even move naturally? Come on. I mean, really think about that. We don't have any power. We don't have any spirit of might and vigor and In our natural lives, how can we move supernaturally? I'm too tired. I don't want to go. I got to wash my hair. I got a sore foot. (laughs) We're talking about God. We're not talking about the guy next door. We're talking about the master of the universe. And we'll make every excuse in the book not to show up. I'm telling you, don't miss your moment of visitation. You don't want to be at the airport when your ship comes in. And I'm telling you, our ship is getting ready to come in. I'm telling you, when I spent my time with the Lord this morning, I have never been more sure of anything in my life when I came out of that place this morning that God is going to do great things before this summer's through. He's going to do great things in your life. He's going to do great things in your situation. You're going to get a breakthrough where you've been pushing and pushing and pushing. That breakthrough is on the way. But you got to push through. You know, God's already done everything he's going to do. Now it's up to me and you. And we've got to be made willing to do what God wants us to. God chose your family, chose your mother. He knew who your father would be. And he knew if your father would be a good father or if he would leave you. A lot of people don't have a father today. I didn't grow up with my dad. My dad died when I was two years old. I never knew him. I knew all about him. I heard all the stories about him. But I didn't know him. I didn't remember sitting on his lap. I didn't remember putting my arms around him. I didn't remember him telling me I was cute and he loved me. I didn't remember any of those things. My mom got remarried when I was four years old, and I didn't have a good stepdad. I didn't have a stepdad that would tell me he loved me, put his arms around me, let me sit on his knee. I didn't have a stepdad that told me I was important and valuable and I would do great things. No, 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 I didn't have one of those. And I used to feel sorry for myself that I didn't have one of those till I realized that God knew I wasn't going to have one of those. And because I didn't have one of those, I'm the person I am today. Come on. It's your perspective. It's your perspective. Okay, you didn't have everything then, but you have everything now. You have more than everything now. When you are in covenant with God and he is your father, you have more than everything. It doesn't matter what you had in your natural life. You can rise up past that because God knew what you wouldn't have. And he knew that through that you would become who he wanted you to be. And you got to take a hold of that truth. Or you'll just sit around in your same old, same old forever. And then when you stand before God one day, you won't have much to say. Because God's going to say, why didn't you do something with what I gave you? We all have gifts. We all have talents and abilities. And we're wasting them day after day after day. Making choices, not mistakes. Because once you made a mistake once, that's it, folks. You make it again. Guess what? That's your choice. It's your choice. We go from being addicted to this to being addicted to that. We go from being addicted to drugs to addicted to people. And then people have to make us happy. People have to make us fulfilled. We go from one dependency to another dependency instead of being dependent on God. 
Instead of letting God uh, put the ship in place in our life, we go from one relationship or one drug or one this experience, one that. Trying to find happiness. And you're never going to find it until you find the fullness of God in your life and the fullness of God in your heart. God knew the things that we would suffer. Okay, we suffered. But you know what? God knew you were going to suffer. Did God know Jesus was going to suffer? Come on. If his own son suffered and he didn't stop it, why would he stop it if we suffer? I was married to somebody who told me flat, I'm not suffering. I don't know who you think you're in covenant with, but I'm not suffering. Well, I'd hate you to see his life now because he's suffering. Because we're called to suffer. And we're called to go through things that are going to change our life. You go through marriage issues and you go through concerns with your children. You go through problems with your parents. You go through issues, issues at your work and with your employer. But I'm telling you, God is looking at you in that instance. He's not looking at the other person. He's just not, folks. And we have to get a hold of that. Because when God is looking at the problem, he's looking at you. He's looking at me. He's not looking at the other person that I'm having an issue with because God is saying to me, what are you doing about it? What are you doing about it? He didn't stop Jesus from suffering. He knew what we would deal with, what we would walk through. He knew the things we would suffer, the things that would hurt us and wound us and tear us down. He knew that we would suffer rejection. He knew that we would be abandoned. That we would experience all kinds of things, but in the midst of dealing with it and not running from it, in the midst of forgiving it and not holding it as a grudge, we would become everything God intended we would be. When Jesus was hanging on the cross, the last thing he said was, forgive them, Lord, for they know not what they do. But God didn't stop Jesus' suffering. He died a thousand ways before they hung him on that tree. He died a thousand times to set the captives free. He died long before they ever hung him on the cross. He died to his own will in the garden. We all need to die to our own will. We're still ex busy, so busy exercising our own will that we're going to do this and we're going to do that and all we do is butt heads. Because nobody says, you know what? This is stupid. This is wrong. We're supposed to love one another. We're supposed to walk in forgiveness. We're supposed to let this go. We're going to suffer. And we're going to be persecuted. But we're going to be blessed because of it. Because God chose those situations in your life. He chose the circumstances that you're in right now. As much as that might be hard for you to believe, God is choosing what's happening right now so you'll change. And you'll stop doing the same old thing, the same old way, the same old time. Because we keep making that mistake over and over and over again. And the Lord said it to me so profoundly today. When you make a mistake once, it's a mistake. But when you make it again, it's a, a choice. What are you choosing? You think you're choosing to help? And you're choosing to allow someone to stay in the same old place. I went through that for years and years and years in my life with the situation with my son. For years. I continued to do the same things over and over again. Thinking I was helping him when I was enabling him. And if they will not change, you can't make them change. You've got to be willing to change. And God makes us willing by putting circumstances and situations in our life that press us so hard that we're going to either have to change or die. I like in Boston what it says, live free or die. And that's about the truth. Live free or die. Because who wants to live in bondage? Do you want to live in bondage to your addictions, to your sin, to your lifestyle? Years and years and years of living the same old way? No. God is looking at the body of Christ to rise up to be a light and a lighthouse. And the only way that that happens is through sanctification. 
and setting ourselves apart to be different. The world and the church don't look that different. And that, my friends, should not be so. Because we're called to talk different. We're called to walk different. You have a conversation with nine out of ten Christians. They talk like the world talks. Oh, woe is me. I got this going on. I got that going on. This here's happening over here. I can't get, I don't have enough money for this. I don't have enough faith for that. You're supposed to be the church. And it's time for us to change. God gave us all a free will. And when we make a decision to exercise our will, contrary to God's way, then we can't blame God. We made the choice. But I see so many people blame God for the place they're in. Why is God doing this to me? Why is God allowing this to happen to me? Well, because you weren't looking after things. So he pressed you into a place to get you to change your attitude. To get you to stop overspending or whatever it is you were doing. People that lose their house. People that lose their kids. People that lose everything. Why? Because we weren't taking care of it properly. Come on. We can lose our kids by being too good to them. Because they're spoiled brats. Kids want your presence much more than they want your presence, the things you can give them. They want you, and they want you there with them, and they want your valuable input in their lives. They don't need what you can give them personally and naturally, but what you can give them from your heart. That's what our children need. And we're sanctified in the midst of dealing with our own kids. I don't know about you, but I have been sanctified by dealing with my kids and my grandkids. I mean, it's a whole different level. I like it. (laughs) When you get to be a grandparent, it's like, wow, these are my trophies. These are my little trophies now because we made it to here. That's quite an accomplishment. We made it to here. We got 11 grandkids. We got a great granddaughter. To me, that is something very special because it says something that, you know what? We made it through. We didn't give up. We pressed on. Are we perfect? No, but we're doing our best and we're moving forward. We're all loving God and trying to serve him. Are we doing it perfectly? No, not yet, but we're moving forward. That's all that God is asking us to do. Keep moving forward. Stop looking behind. Let go of the old. Press into the new. God wants wants to transform you, but he's not going to be able to do it if he doesn't have your permission to. Your will, contrary to God's, takes you big nowhere. Because if you won't exercise your will and give your life over to God, nothing changes. You could live the same way for 32 years If you don't give your life over to God and say, God, do with me what you want to do. Change me, Lord. Change the way I respond to people. Change the way I react. Change the things I say because he wants to change everything. Everything. I remember when I first got saved, I mean, I could tell jokes like you never heard. I could stay up all night and I'd go from one joke to another and I can tell you that I shouldn't have been telling them. But I wasn't saved. You know what I'm saying? Come on. Amen. I hear you. I was probably telling jokes at the coffee time. And I could tell them just one after another. And I was like, oh, I was hot, man. I could just keep them coming. And you know, when I got saved, I couldn't remember one of those stinking jokes. I used to sit around and try to think, what was that joke? Like, maybe I could make it clean somehow, you know? And I couldn't remember that joke to save my life. And he cleaned my mouth up, like, right away. I used to always have a word for you, believe me. (laughs) And not in the way we're supposed to have a word. You know what I'm saying? But I had a word for you. (laughs) And all of a sudden, I thought, wow. Wow. I didn't even feel like saying that stuff anymore. It was incredible. I'd be sitting in the hairdressing shop and hear all these women saying all these nasty words, and I'm thinking, oh, that just sounds terrible. And to think I used to talk like that. But I did. Because I wasn't saved. When you listen to people, 
You don't have to judge them. They'll judge themselves by the things they say. Just listen. I could, I'm telling you, God can change things in an instant if you want him to. I used to get up and say, Lord, just change me. I mean, I was radical when I first got saved because I heard God's voice and I thought, wow, I heard God's voice. And then I said, how do I know? It was like I had two people there for a minute because I heard that voice and I was like, wow, I heard God. And my kids were only little at the time. Marissa and Dallas were, you know, young then. I don't know, seven, eight. And they'd been going to camp, you know, with the neighbor ladies. And they were praying for mom over there. Okay, it's kids. Transforming. Kids. They were praying for mommy at Bible camp. With the nice two old ladies who lived across the street that used to take him to church on Sunday. And they took him back to their house and taught him how to cook and taught them how to paint. Both my kids can paint, they can cook, they're, they're awesome, they got lots of talents. And they'd go to, to church and pray for mommy. And mommy was living like she shouldn't and doing whatever mommy wanted. And I had money, and I had time to do what I wanted to do. And, and we were like big fish in a little pond, big shots, lots of money. And we were the big family in that town, did the, all the shows in town, and it was fun. And then one day I sat up on the side of the bed, and I heard a voice say to me, what are you doing with your life? I looked around the room. I thought, who said that? And then I said, it was God. And then I said, how do I know? And then I heard it again. And in that minute, I definitely knew whatever I was doing wasn't good. I knew in an instant every single thing that was wrong. In an instant. It doesn't take long for God when you hear him. When you choose to hear him. Because I stopped. I didn't just get out of bed and say, oh, well, I'll just push that off. Because we can do that. I've done that many times too. I remember not too long ago, before, when I first met Brother Russ, as a matter of fact, I was working at, a, at um, the Lighthouse bookstore. And uh, there was a nice guy used to come in there. Remember Mary? I told you about him. And we, we would talk about books. And I knew about all the books at that time because I was up on them. Because I was working in the bookstore. So this guy would come in. He was an assistant pastor, and he wasn't married. And I wasn't either at that time. And we would talk about these books. And I used to think, oh, you know, I'm going to have a coffee with this guy. I'm just, I'm just going to go have coffee with him. That's it. So I'm driving home, and I'm thinking about that. I'm going to have coffee with this guy. And I heard the Lord say, no, you're not. And I turned the radio up. And I'm like, I'm going to have coffee with the guy, you know. And I heard the Lord say, no, you're not. And I turned the radio up. I said, I'm going to have coffee with the guy. And the Lord said, no, you're not. Well, I pulled off the road and I shut the radio off. And I said, now look, I'm 40 years old or whatever I was, 43. And I'm going to have coffee with the guy. There's nothing wrong with having coffee with somebody. I'm not going to do anything wrong. I just want to have a cup of coffee. What's wrong with that? He said, no, you're not. I said, okay. But I wasn't happy about it. But when I got home, I realized I'm not the kind of person that can just have a coffee with somebody. I'm not a casual kind of person. If I'm going to enter into a relationship with somebody, I'm going to enter in. And if I did, I certainly wouldn't have been ready when he was ready for me to be joined to Brother Russ. Because I would have been preoccupied. I would have been distracted. I would have gotten myself into something that I shouldn't have because of my own stinking flesh, my own stinking will. What I want, the pleasures of my flesh, the pleasures of having company instead of waiting it out and waiting on God. So I argued with him. And I can't say that I haven't done that since. <laughs> because I do argue with God sometimes, but I think it's okay. He knows me. And we always work it out. He knows that I'm always willing. But I want to find out how far I can go sometimes. That's just me. I don't know about you. Maybe you never have those moments. I do. 
But God is always sanctifying me in the midst of those. He loved us so much that he gave us the right to choose. Now, I could have continued on and said, well, I don't really care, God, if you don't want me to. I'm doing it anyway, and I could have. I remember when God was trying to teach me to get up and pray. And I'm like, oh, leave me alone. I just want to go to sleep. I'm tired. And then I'd, I'd go back to sleep. And then the next night, I'd feel that nudge, and I'd feel that, oh, he wants me to get up and pray. I'm so tired. But then he stopped. I'll tell you, when he stops, it gets your attention. And he say, Lord, I'm sorry. Like, I'm not going to do that anymore. Because he won't force you. But God wants to do something in you. When he nudges you awake, wake up. Get up. Stop doing what you want to do. Stop choosing what you want all the time. Choose what God wants for you. Allow him to sanctify you. That's where sanctification happens. When we give up our right to always choose and choose what God wants. Choose what God wants for your life. Believe me, he wants something a whole lot better for you than you want for yourself. And God wants your life to turn out a whole lot better than it'll ever turn out if you don't have him in your life. So let's go 100%. Let's have God in everything we do. Jesus suffered, and God never stopped his suffering. And I can tell you that God is not going to stop ours. He's going to let us work through it. He's going to let it go to fruition. Why? So that the same thing that can happen in Jesus' life happened, can happen in ours. He was, he died the first fruits of many. And I'm telling you that you're going to die to yourself, that you would be the first fruits of many. When you die to yourself and your desire to hurt somebody's feelings or do something wrong and you love them instead, then you're going to attract them to what's on the inside of you. They're going to be changed by the way that you treat them. And we heard that last night in the transformations talk from Lisa, as she talked about how her three boys began to go through the school system and just befriend people and love them where they were at and be nice to them and speak encouragement and empower them and tell them they were valuable. People need to know that. And we get in a situation, even in our own homes, we don't like our siblings. We don't like our sister. We don't like our brother. We don't like the way they do this and the way they do that. So instead of loving them, We turn away from them. And we don't know those things when we're not saved. But we're saved, friends. We don't have an excuse. We are filled with the love of God. It's been shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Spirit. But you know what? It doesn't do us any good if we just leave it in there. we got to pull it out over unloving situations. we got to pull it out over people that are unlovable. we got to be willing to say, God, I'm going to do what you want me to do in this situation, in this circumstance. I'm really going to walk in the word. I'm not just going to be a hearer only, deceiving myself. Because if you speak the word and you hear the word and you don't walk in the word, you'll trip on it. We're called to walk in the word, not be hearers only. Every single situation in our life can be changed by the power of God's word if we have the tenacity to walk in it. It's not easy to turn the other cheek. Believe me, sometimes I felt like turning this one. It's not easy. But it can be done. It's our choice. It's not easy to say something nice when you'd really like to tell them what you really think. Because your mind hasn't been renewed. You still got stinking thinking. Because God has not got those thoughts towards them. We might have those thoughts towards them, but God does not have those thoughts towards them. God's thoughts towards us are lovely and just and pure and right and true. All those bad thoughts is just you. So God wants us to speak and think and do. And he wants us to walk in the word, not just hear it. We have many, many people that know the word of God, can do scriptures left and right. I've seen it in lots of marriage times when we're with married people. And they want their spouse to did it, did it, did it. But they don't want to. 
Well, when she shows me some respect, then I'm going to do this. And she's like, well, when he loves me like he's supposed to, then I'll, I'll give him some respect. Well, I said, you two might as well just get out of here right now. Because you're like two ox button heads. Nobody's going to choose to say, you know what? You're right. We're supposed to be walking in the word. I'm going to go home and I'm going to love my wife. And I'm going to love her so much that she's going to respect me. And the woman is going to say, I'm going to go home and respect my husband so much that the love for me is going to rise up on the inside of him. It can be done, my friends. We do not always think alike as husbands and wives. I don't always think like my husband. And he does not always think like me. But we have made a decision that we are going to get into agreement when we're not. So that the blessing of God can be poured out. Because when we will walk in agreement, we will walk in the fullness of God. And agreement is a choice. It's a choice for somebody to yield, for somebody to submit, for somebody to say, okay, let's do it your way. Let's walk it out and see what God is going to do. I trust you. And I trust God in you. God laid it out the way that it was supposed to be. But it's always, always, always up to you and me. If we'll choose to do what God wants us to. And when we choose to do what God wants us to, and we operate in his principles, and we operate in the kingdom, then things change. But if we just operate our same old way, then we get the same old thing. I mean, insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. That's crazy. But when you walk in the purpose and plan of God and you put the word of God to work in your life, the word will work. There is enough power in the word to bring itself to pass. It will not return void. It will accomplish whatever it is sent to do. That's God's promise and his word is true. God will do what he said he will do. But he wants to do it through me and you. And we have to be willing to allow him to. As hard as, as it is for us to believe, God's plan from the very beginning is that his son would suffer and die for us. And who the heck were we? I mean, let's check it out, folks. We're a rebellious people. We're still a people with unclean lips. We still have unclean thoughts. We still do things that we're not supposed to do in God's eyes. And I believe in grace, but I don't believe in sloppy agape grace. I don't believe the grace that covers up continually for our bad sin and choices. Because your bad choices are sin, my friends. When you know what to do and you don't do it, that is sin. I don't believe in kidding myself and I don't believe in leading people astray. I believe in speaking the word of truth today. And I believe that if we don't rise up in this hour and we don't change the way we're thinking and the way we're speaking and the way we're acting, how can we believe for a minute that we're really saved? If we're saved, let's see the fruit of that salvation. Let's see the fruit of change. Let's see the fruit of a redeemed mind. Let's see the fruit. Let's see the fruit. I got people telling me that are saved. They got no fruit. Where's your fruit? Know the tree by the fruit it bears. So look at your own life. The Bible says judge yourself that you won't be judged. Because I'm telling you, a season of judgment is coming upon the church. Judgment is going to come to the house of the Lord. And God is going to bring us to account for the things that we have said and the things that we have continued to do year after year after year and still confessing him. Don't be kidding yourself. What you reap, you shall sow. And God will not be mocked. He will not be mocked. And we've got to stop living our life the way we want to and begin living the way that he wants us to. That's our words. That's our actions. Follow me in word and deed when you step out to plant your seed. Follow me, the Lord says. In everything you say and in everything you do, 
Because wherever you go, he's going with you. You're not alone. He's never going to leave you or forsake you. You can turn away from God as many times as you want, but when you turn around, guess what? He's right there. He didn't go anywhere because his word is always true. If there's a lie to be told, it came from me or you. God's word is true. He's never going to leave us. He's never going to forsake us. We don't have to go through anything alone. If we do, we choose to. If we don't want to be in God's will, then we take ourselves out. It's a choice, my friends. And we have to learn to choose the right way. We have to learn to choose the truth and stop believing the lie. Stop believing the lie that this time it might work. That this time I might just get to do it. That this time things will be different. Stop believing the lie. It's never going to change until you change. It's never going to be different until you make it different. It's never going to be okay until you get sick and tired of it being not okay. That's the only way. It's never going to be any other way until you say it's going to be. Because it's your choice. God gave us a free will. Not so we could just do whatever the heck we wanted to. That we'd make a choice to love him and give it back. That's the purpose and plan of God. And he takes us through the hard dealings of life. So that we'll get to the place where we say, okay. Okay, God. I can't do this by myself anymore. I'm tired of going around in circles. I give up. Obviously, I'm not doing it the way that I should do it. I need you to help me. I need you to direct me. I need you. Those are sweet music. That's a melody to the ears of God. That we finally say, guess what, God? I can't do it without you. Because I can't live in this situation if I don't have your love, if I don't have your grace, if I can't exercise it over this situation, I can't live here. And God will sanctify us in the midst of that. In the midst of a mess, he'll bring a miracle. But not if we don't allow him to. If not, if we don't choose to. The choice is always up to me and you. We need to give thanks in all things. All things. That's a hard one. We need to give thanks in all things. And find something to give thanks for. Give thanks that when Jeff went home to be with the Lord, it was from glory to glory. We give thanks to God for that. That, that he loved God so much, you've got to know the guy's life. I mean, he loved God. What better way to go? He didn't have much family around him. We were his family. And he was here in the midst of us. Look at things in the right perspective. Change the way you look at things. Change your mindset. Renew your mind with the word of God. Put the word of God so astutely in your heart that when you get pressed into a corner and people are pushing you and pressing you, the word of God comes through. His plan, his purpose. You're walking and living and breathing the word of God. It will change every, every, every situation if you choose it. If you don't choose it, then you'll have the same old thing. Believe me, I lived in those years too. But the experiences that we have serve to change us and make us new. Okay, we get saved. Behold, all things are new. That's true. But I can tell you that's a spiritual saying. Because your spirit got saved, but your nasty self needs some work. You're stinking thinking. Needs a tune-up. Your soulish realm, all your wants, all your needs, all your desires, your fleshly appetites, they need to be dealt with. And your spirit man has to become strong in order for your spirit man to overpower your flesh. And the only way that the spirit man grows is by the feeding of the word of God. And as we stay in the word and we begin to meditate in the word and we put the word upon the tablets of our heart and they, we wear it like an ornament around our neck and we walk in it and we talk it and we believe it and we see it come to pass, there's no way that the flesh is going to take us out. And there's no way that the devil can come and push us around. 
because we have all power. We have all authority. We can deal with every principality of the darkness and the night because God has given us power and in his sight we can rise up and be everything he called us to be. The choice is up to you and me. It's not easy. It's W-O-R-K. Most people don't like that four-letter word. We hardly ever hear that four-letter word. Work. Because being negative and being in doubt is easy. Oh, it's so easy to be negative. It's so easy to tell about what's all wrong in my life. It takes work to see the positive, to change my mind, to have a good perspective. It takes work to say, I'm not going to live this old way. I'm going to walk this way. I'm going to put the word of God in my life until it comes to life in my life. Because that word, this, that's logos, will become rhema as we continue to meditate in it. Why do we sit up and eat the bread of sorrows and worry and be in fear of things? That's not faith in God. That's faith in the problem. That's faith in the situation. And I'm telling you, if we keep doing that as believers, we're going to bring that thing to pass. I showed myself that this week. I had a Job experience because I started two weeks ago. Oh, my gosh, there's going to be something happen with these tickets. And my greatest fear was that Brother Russ would go in the Congo alone. And guess what happened? He did. Now... If I had taken a different perspective and I'd been more positive and said, there's no way he's going in alone, would it have changed the situation? I don't know if it would have actually changed the situation, but it would have changed the life I had for the last two weeks. And then if he didn't get in there, I would have said, oh, well, I don't have a bad attitude about it, so I must be okay. God's going to do something anyway. Because I don't think God's going to take him in there and then have something happen to him. Come on. He's a man of God. But I allowed the devil to come and visit me with those little nagging fears. He doesn't hear very well. He won't understand their heavy language, their their accent. He'll agree with things he shouldn't because he won't know what they're saying. I mean, I had all kinds of weird thoughts. Finally, the other night, I sat up in bed and said, shut up. Shut up in Jesus' name. Sometimes you just got to say, devil, shut up. And stop having faith in your fears. Stop having faith in your doubts. When in doubt, cast it out. Rise up in faith and say, God, have your way. And God's way might not always be our way. And you might have to walk through some things. It might be a little challenging a time or two. And God might be doing something new in you. And maybe God is pressing you to your last place so that he can show you that all things are okay by the power of his grace. That you don't have to worry. You don't have to be in fear. God is always, always, always right here. He didn't go anywhere. He knows what you're going through. He knows what you're going to have to do, but he's going to do it with you. And he's going to bring about the outcome that's the best for you. Because he loves you. He wants to bless you. Giving thanks to God in all things, knowing this is the will of God for your life. Why am I going through this? Because he wants to change you. He wants you to stop living in your fears. He wants you to rise up and live in faith. He wants you to stop making mistakes. He wants you to choose the right things. He wants you to stop making bad choices. Why are you going through it? Because you choose to go through it. You choose fear. You choose bad choices. Guess what? We all choose. And it takes work to choose God's way. Sanctification. It comes through habitation. It comes through everything we go through. God has chosen me and you. 
sometimes we find that hard to believe. If you're anything like me, when I was going to school, nobody chose me. I was the ugly duckling story on the pond. And when I saw those swans and I saw they really were ugly ducklings, I was shocked. I said, it's true, that story. Those little ducks, they're ugly. But look what they become. And I was that ugly duckling story. You know, nobody wanted me on the team. I'd stand in line waiting, waiting for somebody to choose me. Nobody would choose me. I was always the last. I always felt rejected. I always felt left out. I always felt abandoned. But I'm telling you tonight that God has chosen you. You're no longer rejected. You're not abandoned. You're good enough. You're fit enough. You're fine enough. God has chosen you. You're here tonight because God has put his seal of approval on your life. And God has chosen you. What man couldn't see, God has seen in you. God sees your potential. God sees what you are able to accomplish. God sees your gifts. He sees your talents. He sees that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. God has placed inside of you seeds of excellence and seeds of greatness. But you have to be willing to take hold of your own flesh and make the choice to live in the spirit so that you can reap from the spirit instead of reaping corruption from your fleshly choices. God is looking for us to change our mindset. Transformation becomes right here first. When Jesus went to Calvary, it was at the place of the skull. The battle was raging at the place of the skull, and it still rages there. It still rages in our minds, our thoughts. We can't do it. We don't measure up. We're not good enough. We're not smart enough. We're not strong enough. I'm too fat. I'm too short. I'm too tall. I've done it all. I'm too this. I'm too that. God says you're good enough. You're smart enough. You're valuable enough. You're tall enough. I made you the way you are. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. I knit you together in your mother's womb. I knew you in eternity past. And I put you here in this place, in this season, and this time because I have a call and an appointment and an anointing on your life. I have handpicked you. I've chosen you to walk and to live, and to love, and to be a part of my team, my kingdom team, to bring light and life and love and transformation to a hurt and dying world. God has chosen you. You're good enough. You're smart enough. You're young enough. You're pretty enough. You're good enough. Don't let the devil tell you anymore that you're not, that you can't, that you won't, that you don't. Because God says you are and you will and you shall and you do. But the choice is still up to you. You've got to be willing. You've got to be willing. I see so many in the body of Christ that aren't. They want to go to church. And they want to have a good time at church, but they don't want to do what God has called them to. We all have a purpose. We all have a plan. We all have a future. God has something for every one of us to do. But we have to be willing to. God's chosen us. And you know, he doesn't make any mistakes. God always knows what he's doing. So it doesn't matter what happened in your past. It doesn't matter that one day a long time ago somebody didn't treat you right. It doesn't matter that in someone else's eyes you weren't very pleasing in their sight. It doesn't matter that other people didn't think you could do it. It matters what God says about you and me. You're chosen, you see. We all wanted to be chosen to play a special part. But the waiting and the rejoicing 
rejection only serve to break your heart we all wanted to be chosen but many times it seems we were missed oh but when it comes to jesus you're on his favorites list god chose us in the womb before we were ever born he touched us by his spirit and healed the heart that was torn he chose us first and foremost to execute his plan oh others thought we couldn't but Jesus says we can. We all have insecurities and things we think we cannot do. You see, he wasn't looking at our abilities when he chose me and you. He was looking for availability and a heart to do his will oh he was looking for a partner an empty vessel he could fill someone who would walk beside him and follow in his way oh, looking for the chosen he's searching still today but it's always our decision what we will and will not do but God has done his part he's chosen A pure and spotless bride. We all wanted to be chosen to play a special part. And God has made a way. So when are we going to start? into your promised land no more making excuses for your limit or your lack because when we are on heaven's team jesus has our back and we can walk in his path the thing. 
things you say. Watch the things you say. It's time, it's time to do it his way. Sarah, many gifts I've given you. I've poured out my love and life, my daughter, over you. I've put on the inside so many precious things. Time to rise, Sarah, and sing what my heart sings. I see the musical notes circling round about you. And I hear the Spirit of the Lord, and He's saying, Sarah, it's time. supernatural happenings today. Sarah, I see you walking through the garden and I see the Lord taking hold of your hand and I see him, him pulling you forward and you're trying to just stand and the Lord is saying it's time to move, it's time to change, it's time to see that I have a plan for you to rise and be see some situations in the past and it's kind of a dark place and the Lord said in there I haven't given you grace I want you to come out from some decisions and some choices you've made I want you to rise up in a new place today for many gifts and talents have I given you and I want you to rise up and choose to do what I've called you to for this is your season of change, says the Lord. And autumn, I see you moving through the seasons. <laughs> and I feel the Lord said that he chose your name because you'll be a child of the harvest. And the Lord says you're going to harvest in many ways in this season. But the Lord says, Autumn, I'm making you a leader. I don't want you to follow. I don't want you to follow, says the Lord. I want you to lead. I want you to rise up in me. And the Lord says, I don't want you doing things just because other people's do them. <laughs> I want you to make your choice and choose because I want you to choose them. And the Lord says, I will adorn you season and I will bring you to that perfect place in me when you rise up as a leader don't follow I've called you to lead <laughs> Ooh, Chad I, I just saw a cloud drop here it was like a blanket that came over you and Wendy. And I heard the Lord say that in this season, he's got you undercover. And the Lord says that he's causing some great things to come forth in that place of protection. It's like a cocoon. And the Lord says there's a butterfly that's fixing to come forth. And the Lord said all that was in the old is going to become new when you come out of that cocoon. And I see it starting to spin 
and I see some of it coming off like an unraveling and I start to see the tip of the wing of the butterfly sprouting and coming forth and I hear the Lord saying it's not afar off but press in in this season into my word press in for the Lord says I'm putting an anointing upon you to bring forth the riches from the darkness and the Lord says you're going to begin to see things in the word that you have never seen before and the Lord says you're going to begin to study the word together and it's going to be like a symphony that happens around the table and you're going to see it one way and Wendy's going to see it another and the Lord says it's all going to come together under cover and the Lord says it's going to be a beautiful teaching that comes from husband to wife it's going to bring great life and the Lord says he's going to teach you to walk fully functioning as a team a dream team <laughs> Whew. coming out from under cover but the Lord says you'll always find a place of safety when you go back in there don't be afraid to come under cover and stay in that place until I give you that special grace. And the Lord says, when you come out from under, you'll bring many others out from under. Many people will get a hand up, not a hand out, but you'll teach them how to walk it out. You'll teach them how to walk it out, says the Lord. says you're smart you are smart the Lord says and he's given you that intelligence and the Lord says that he is going to use that intelligence in the season ahead I see you with a very prosperous call I see a business anointing on you and I see God is going to teach you some things in the next season of your life that's going to totally change where you're at you're smart know how smart you are the Lord says you're going to find out because the next season of your life he's going to begin to teach you and train you you're going to hear his voice as clear as you hear me speaking to you right now you're going to know what he wants you to do you're not going to have any doubt you're not going to have fear and you're going to walk in faith and you're going to hear and know that God's going to take you to the next place and he's going to gift you with an intelligence that's beyond your years. A wisdom that you just don't have just because you're old, but because God's given it to you. So the Lord says, don't be concerned with what people think in this season and time. Just know that I think you're smart. And you're going to do great things in the seasons of your life. Things that you never imagined you would do. And your mother didn't either. I see you even giving some things to your mother that you so wanted her to have. I see you gifting her and putting things around her feet that she didn't have. And I see your heart to bless her and your heart to pour out over her. And God sees that heart. And you're going to make a way even for your mom in the next season as you press into God's plan. You're smart. Don't let anybody tell you you're not. I see a great pastoral call on your life. But it's not pastoral in the natural way we think pastoral. Because the Lord says that you're going to have love for the people. That's true. But you're going to have a tenacity that makes them follow through. You're not just going to love them and leave them. You're going to love them and push them to do what's right. And the Lord says you're going to have a voice that speaks into the darkness of the night and you're going to bring forth with your words you have a prosperity anointing too the Lord says you're gonna have an anointing to take the offering you're gonna have an anointing to bring the store the storehouse goods in and you're going to see the storehouse fatten up because God is going to cause you to take even a work that's going to feed the hungry and help to house the homeless. The Lord says you have a great heart for the underdog and those that are underprivileged. And you're going to be one that will not only see it, but you'll be one who will do it. You'll lift them up, take them out of where they are and put them in a new place. Because you're going to have the kind of heart that makes them follow through. Follow through. Accountability. Accountability. Follow through. well so deep untapped it's like a reservoir it's like a reservoir 
and it's so fresh and it's so pure and God is going to begin to bring that fresh flow of who he is that living water it's on the inside of you and the Lord said many will drink and be refreshed as you bring forth the word of God you're going to bring forth the word from the word but it's going to have a great revelatory factor about it and the Lord says when the word is spoken power will go forth and people's lives will change because of the power in the word because of the revelatory call that's on your life rivers of living water rivers and rivers of living water many talents many abilities many giftings in God consecrate set yourself aside and let him do it all you won't even know yourself when he's through thank you Lord it's a new day Marie it's a brand new day Marie behold the old is past and the new has come and the Lord says now the choice to walk in the new because he has all new things for you all new things for you and the Lord says even those things that have happened in the natural seek to show you that all things are new because there's a brand new you and the Lord says even spiritually I'm changing some things I'm realigning some things and I'm making you okay with being who you are and the Lord says while you're in this season and you're alone you're not alone for the Lord says I am with you and I'm with you in a big way and I am bringing all things new today. The Lord's changing some mindsets. He's changing attitudes. A whole new way of life he's bringing to you. And at this time next year, when you look back, you'll say, wow, I remember that day. Because now look at where I am and look what God has done. Look at the work of the sun. You're going to have a beautiful tan a year from now because the sun is going to shine greatly in your life and new things are not just on the way but they're already here today now walk in them says the Lord don't walk in the past it's over it's done it's finished it's through and now I make a brand new you thank you Lord I see renewal I see renewal I see there's been some struggles and some problems and some situations and I feel like the Lord saying this was a good word for you tonight because you need to be transformed in your relationship with one another that's God's purpose that's his plan that he would bring you together as husband as woman and man as wife not for trouble and strife but for new life Donald more than you. You have to choose. For the Lord wants to bless you. He wants you to live in the covenant blessing. And you can live in the covenant blessing outside the covenant. But when you'll choose to live in that place, God will shower you with his grace. And you'll rise up brand new choose to it's all about our choice it's all about the things we think and say it's all about being willing to do what we need to do every day it's all about loving when we'd rather walk away and it's all about laying down our life for each other today when we walk in those covenant blessings we walk in God's purpose and plan
you can do it if you choose it. But it's our choice. Every day, what we will do word from God to know what God wants us to do because all through this night he's been speaking to me and he's been speaking to you he's been talking to us about our choices and the decisions that we make he's been talking to us about our plans and whether we'll give or take he's been talking to us about becoming who he wants us to be and being willing and obedient you see, it's always, always, always up to me and you what we're going to do. We get to make the choice. He loved us enough to make it that way. That we can choose to walk in life or we can choose to walk in death today. But he said in his word, I've put before you the power of life and death. And then he told us to choose life. Choose life. Choose life in your marriage. Choose life with your children. Choose life at work when your boss you'd rather kill. Choose life. Sometimes I had many problems with people and I said, gosh, can't I just kill them and tell God they died? But choose life. Choose life. When you're having a problem with your mother, choose life. When you're having a problem with your brother, choose life. When you're having a problem with your sister, with your aunt or with your friend, it's not life's end. Just choose life. In every situation, every circumstance that you find yourself in today, the way out is God's way. It's always God's way. And He is sanctifying you. He's making you pure and holy and reliable and moral and full of faith and full of power and full of strength in the midst of your family, in the midst of your job situation, in the midst of your circumstance. Whatever it is that you don't want to go through, God is going through it too. And he is making you into his likeness and image in that place when we yield our spirit and we're empowered by his grace. Whatever it is tonight, just lift your hands and let God pour it out. Just let him pour it out over you. The fullness of his plan, the fullness of his life and his light and his love that you would walk that you would talk, that you would be what He wants you. Pour it out, God. Pour out your Spirit, your love and your grace. Pour out transformation. Just 
Spirit, pour out your light, that we would rise up and be pleasing in your sight. And let the words of our mouth, O oh God, and the meditation of our heart be acceptable to you. Lord, in its fullness and not just in part, but the fullness of our life would be filled with the fullness of you, that we would rise to the occasion and do what you've called us to. Lord, let us take this responsibility and this privilege to heart that we would endeavor to know you in your fullness and not just in part but that we would know you we would know your love and we would know your ways and we would choose to walk in them every day that we would never again choose death but we'll choose life we will not choose heartache and arguing and bickering and strife, but we'll choose love and liberty and light. We will walk in life. Lord, let that transformation just be. settle for staying the way we are but that we would be made more and more like you the morning star shining and singing over all of us today Lord make us willing to walk in your ways Come to the front. If you're going to leave, I'm just going to bless you as you go. Thank you for coming tonight. I know we're at that point in the summer where things kind of come to a lull and maybe even we feel dull. But God is saying, and so am I. Thanks for coming.
make the choice. It's as simple as changing your mind. It's as simple as saying yes instead of no. It's as simple as saying, I'm not going to stay, I'm going to go. It's as simple as turning around. It's as simple as being found. It's simple, you see. But the devil wants to make it look like it isn't that simple to you and me. Man's complex problems are his own making. That's what the Bible would say. God says it's easy to serve me today. Make the choice. Choose. You can win. You don't have to lose. Make the choice. No more strife. 